The first presentation will be given under the theme of the role of culture and creativity for the sustainable development of humankind by Elmi Shelver, the creative economy expert and communications officer at UNCTAD. Let me just briefly introduce our presenter. She is an expert in development issues, creativity, communication, innovation. For 15 years, she has dealt with regional global issues in various fields, the economy, finance, digital, media industries, not just in South Africa, but she has provided consulting services internationally. And currently, she is operating digital channel of UN UNCTAD, and she's also the co-author of the 2018 Creative Economy Report. Please give her a big round of applause. Good morning. Good morning. Afternoon. Yes, and the evening to some of our dear colleagues around the world who are um, in the evening. Um, friends, advocates for culture, before we get into my presentation, I'd like to just share a short video on the International Year for the Creative Economy to tee up our uh, conversation for the rest of this panel. Thank you so much. As Professor Bay and Ms. Bokova have already teed up, the world is at a critical juncture right now. We need to make and take global decisions that have not been taken since the Second World War. We also need to make good on decisions and agreements that the international community and nations have failed to deliver on to date. These promises include those made after the global financial crisis of 2008-9, the Paris Agreement, the Rio Earth Summit, and several commitments around aid for trade that have simply gone unmet. These failed vows have left the pe people and the planet in peril, and also the most vulnerable increasingly so, as inequality within and between nations rises. We cannot go on like this. That much is clear. And the COVID crisis is just the beginning of several that we will face on a global and human level. I'm calling this the triple emergency of the three C's, COVID-19, climate change, and community and social unrest. I don't want to be dark. We all know what the future will bring, even if we do not want to face it. That's the wonder of working on and in the creative industries. We see things that others and other people do not. There is an upside though. There are three other C's in the arsenal that can help counter the first three. They are culture, creativity, and communication, and we have them in abundance. This is what I'd like to talk to you today about, how to truly use these three tools to generate the step change that is needed to actually achieve sustainable development for humankind. If we are to score the global goals or come anywhere near them, we need to lean on the power of culture 
to change minds and behavior. And I think Professor Bay alluded to this in his opening address. We need to harness the creativity of all people everywhere to innovate and draw on ancient wisdom, intangible as it is, but irreplaceable. And we need to work hard to improve communications between people, communities, countries, and culture to find better ways of working together to solve what will undoubtedly be global crises. This is no small task. So let us eat the elephant bite by bite. I'd like to talk to you about these three C's and why they are the cornerstone of the choices we must make if we are to embrace sustainable developments on a global scale. To activate the three C's in response, we need to embrace our intangible cultural heritage. And that is why today in this conference is so critical right now. As the climate changes, communities fray, mistrust expands and unrest becomes more common. We need to go back to basics. We must reconnect with our humanity and use the power of culture to embrace the changes we need to make to adopt new and sustainable practices that will ultimately save our civilization. We know that heritage does not stop or start at a museum or some faraway site and that culture has power. We live it, experience it, reshape it, and create it constantly. Our stories, rituals, practices, the daily ones, like taking our children to school, reading books, eating dinner together, or observations like big moments like Hanukkah or Eid or Christmas, are cultural heritage in motion. And we need cultural heritage and the power of its extreme diversity to map out how we will face extreme weather events, welcome new climate refugees to our countries, support caregivers, children and the elderly, change business practices that really need to change if we are to become more sustainable and figure out new rhythms and ways of being or promote intercultural dialogue and be more respectful of other ways of life. These pattern changes are the answer to our future. But in order to implement them, we must turn to the past and draw on the wealth of knowledge and skills that is transmitted through culture from one generation to the next, intangible cultural heritage. During the height of the pandemic, artists and people in the creative industries showed us how we do this. Early on in the pandemic, creatives drove solidarity. Starting in March in 2020 with digital fashion shows in Milan, Paris, Shanghai, and Moscow. As the crisis escalated, it moved to empty concert halls and onto apps. Then ultimately onto the couch and into your living room, my living room, creativity in all of its wonder. They say that necessity is the mother of invention. And our artists around the world helped us reinvent new ways of being together apart. They helped us stave off boredom, boredom, encourage connection, and kept us entertained during the lockdowns. I remember watching an Andreas Bocelli concert and a West End show online, and then Chris Martin in his living room singing to a global audience. And then watching my South African, South African friends and their band Meraki perform on the roof to neighbors while streaming their home concerts. In the process, these creative people and artists were showing us two things. One, creativity makes us human. And two, culture is how we respond in a crisis. The human spirit is indomitable. No more so was this evidence than in our global cohort of artists and creatives singing, dancing, painting, producing, and acting as a balm to the burning pain of isolation. Untab has been tracking the response of the creative industries to COVID-19, but for more than 20 years, we've been mapping the economic value of the creative economy. For many that deal with intangibles, this can seem like an incomplete science. Counting culture, how do you do that? Well, 
you measure the trade in goods and services. And it is critical that we count culture and track its impact, both commercial and cultural value, so we can influence policy and drive that drives investments, improve trade and create a better enabling environment. So both the social and the economic impacts can be felt by producers, consumers and communities like us. So what do we know about the creative economy right now? We know that the global GDP contribution pre-COVID was around three to five percent, often outperforming more traditional sectors like agriculture. UNESCO is about to release new data which shows the exports of cultural goods doubled in value from $131 billion in 2005 to reach $271 billion in 2019, which is up $20 billion on the $250 billion figure of 2018. COVID is likely to change these figures for 2020 and 2021, but it doesn't matter. The global creative economy employs about 30 million people worldwide, and it is growing with digital transformation. The creative economy is also a place for young people. 20% of people employed in the creative industries are aged between 15 and 19, more than in any other sectors. UNESCO also notes that women have a more equal hold on creative jobs, seizing 45% of creative occupations worldwide. This year is also the International Year of the Creative Economy, as you saw in the opening video and a critical moment to put create the creative economy issue front and center on the global development agenda. But what is the creative economy? Well, if, if today you read a digital newspaper or bought your broadcast from a newsstand, if you subscribe to a video streamer or go to your local cinema, if you buy clothes or furniture online or in a mall, read a book or listen to a music streaming service or podcast or an LP at home, you are consuming a creative product or service. Today, the creative economy is intimately bound with the interplay between human creativity, the reason we're here today, and ideas and intellectual property, knowledge, and our great booster technology. The creative industries include everything from architecture to furniture production, computer games to software, art to design. As they grow underpinned by rapid technological change, it is important to understand how they are changing and what the impact is. For example, Indonesia reaps the benefits of the orange economy daily. Their latest data shows the creative economy contributes 7.4% to its GDP and employs 14.3% of its total workforce across various sub sectors, from craft to gaming, fashion to furniture. The demand for creative goods, and more specifically, them digitally delivered, has never been greater than right now, and COVID has just accelerated this. So that's the status quo. Now back to the three things to counter our triple emergency, we can. Number one, use culture to drive behavioral change. Number two, harness creativity to create a future that is sustainable. And three, reshape global communications and the media machine to inspire action. So let's look at number one, using culture to drive behavioral change. Heritage is not history. It is very much alive in our daily thoughts, actions, and practices. Intangible cultural heritage is one of the driving forces of the creative industry and indeed it shapes our perceptions and our behaviors. If we want to combat climate change, we must change our behavior. If we want to build more cohesive communities as we become more globalized and ironically more polarized in the process, we must change our behavior. Recycling plastic bottles and lobbying for more circular practices requires a new culture of doing so. And cultural programming can do this from theaters to TV shows to sitcoms. Cultural programming has the power to stimulate this change. It's been proven, for example, that the American sitcom Will and Grace helped shift the national needle and reduce homophobia in the USA in the early 2000s. 
I remember from my own childhood the impacts of theater activations called Love Life and how it shaped my understanding of HIV AIDS and my own personal safe sex practices. Photography can inspire people into action. I was recently moved by student photographers exhibiting on an EU program who documented the plight of the Roma living outside Novi Sad. Film can highlight misunderstood situations. Music can bring people together and generate empathy. The same can, um, the same can be achieved today. Greta Thunberg's school strike for climate is a cultural movement that's grounded in intangible cultural heritage of protecting the environment. But we can get more granular and high impact at the local level by leveraging artists, creatives, activators, innovators, and educators to actively drive change using cultural practices and moments and speak to communities in a language of cultural change that they understand. This is where cultural heritage is so important. Secondly, there is the inherent role of creative thinking and the problem solving mindset that must be embedded in all science, technology and innovation activities for us to tackle the triple C's. I recently saw that Patagonia, the jacket makers, have partnered up with a startup that's recycling old fishing nets to turn it into a fabric for a new line of jackets that they are producing. That's science, technology, innovation, fashion, and a change of business practice all in one, and all of which took creativity to find a sustainable solution to a big global problem, fishing nets. Fishing gear today accounts for roughly 10% of the 12 million tons of plastic that end up in our seas every year. Discarded nets, lines and ropes make up about 46% of the Great Pacific garbage patch. This is one great example of how creativity can help change that. As traditional industry also goes into decline, trade pattern shift and digital transformation takes hold. The creative industries are likely to play a more central and growing role. Countries that want better prospects for their people should work to leverage their local talent and skills in subsectors of the creative economy to increase their GDP contributions. They can also harness creativity to find new solutions to existing challenges under the sustainable development agenda. This means using creative industries as allies to tackle clim the climate crisis, drive a clean industrialization, and innovate through technology. Sustainability is more than just about greener and cleaner industries and buildings. It is also about sustainable growth, development, jobs, and communities. The creative industries can help here too. For example, by intensifying and diversifying in these areas, developing nations and uh, Professor Bay was mentioning the digital divide in Africa, can potentially escape the commodity dependence trap through new services and products and leverage their intangible cultural heritage to do so. Indonesia, for example, is betting on its tech, game and music industries as turnkey subsectors for GDP growth. Thirdly, reshaping communications to inspire action. We need to tap our oral histories to find new ways of generating breakthrough communications to change people's minds so that we can have the cultural change I spoke about in uh, the first point. Fake news is killing our scientific inquiry and our ability to think clearly. Cultural institutions, creatives, marketers, journalists, musicians, influencers, and artists can play a major role in not only countering fake news, but actually being part of campaigns that inspire us to take action on the three Cs and their impacts. We must reshape the way we communicate and the way information is being relayed so that it drives people to take action and become involved. But for this, we need solid, true, and factual information. We need to counter misinformation and embrace a culture of critical thinking and inquiry. Good communications is not a relic of the past, quite yet. We have a great history and an intangible cultural history to leverage. 
of using communication campaigns to change minds and drive action. The CFC campaign to shrink the ozone layer is but one example of what we can do if we come together collectively as humanity. But in the age of fake news, we can use our heritage, our oral history, and novel cultural ways of communicating to re both reinvigorate scientific rigor while making it palatable and cool to be future-proofing ourselves in the face of crisis. So, in summary, so, so, let's think about what you can do. Right now, you may not be able to work. Yes, Amy. you do. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I hope you can wrap up soon. Yes, two seconds, thank you. Right now, you may not think you are working to counter the three Cs, but I challenge you to think out of the box about the way you use your work, the, uh, about the way your work uses culture, creativity, and communications to drive sustainable development. You may not be feeling it, but you are doing something. Whether you attend an event, raise money, support an artist, buy a reputable newspaper, support and share good content online, Get put on a production, promote great startups pursuing sustainable innovation, you are making a difference. If you encourage others to do the same, the network effects will amplify our mutual and necessary journey to sustainable development. I also ask you to think about what you can do for culture and creativity, drawing on your own intangible cultural heritages and experiences and intensify them so that what is counter becomes mainstream through this wonderful tool that we all have called culture. Thank you.